we're back again for another edition of Tiakau TV. Reese Trumper, Tiakau's racing manager. What's going on in your world this week, Reese? A uh, very quiet week for us on the racing front, Hazy. Um, the weather's packed up again. It's been raining all day today. Um, races at Rotorua tomorrow and you Plymouth Friday and Rickton uh, Saturday with Pukekohe. So just a handful running, but just keep us ticking over. And, of course, over in Melbourne, we've got um, some exciting racing action at the Valley um, with Rubicon crossing in there at Friday, not on Friday night. And, of course, Imperatriz in the Group 1 Manicato Stakes there on Saturday as well. And she is in there in a pretty um, small but competitive field. Um, and we'll cross, cross over and talk to Ben Gleeson a bit later on to, um, to see how she's going leading into that race. But for now, Reese, we'll talk about the winners of last week. And I guess um, rule, of, rule of law first up at, Tara, at Tauranga um, was really impressive as well. It was a great effort from him. Um, he had to do a bit of work to get to the front, but he kept up a really solid gallop to the line. Um, he's a big horse that's going to have a bright staying future for the future, for sure. And uh, Kai there at Tarapa on Saturday, the, the sole winner at the venue. She was great. Um, it was probably a track that wasn't to her liking, so we've just tipped her out for 10 days to two weeks. Um, she's got black type aspirations next time she's in and it would be really good for her CV. And Taliska there at Ashford on Sunday. Sam Weatherly um, went down there for the one ride. Um, track conditions probably weren't in, um, in his favour, but um, he, he rode it like the best horse in the race there, race. Exactly, and he was the best horse. Um, it was probably ideal that it was wet. Um, it would play more like 14, so now we can just head straight into the guineas off that run, knowing that he's had a solid uh, last start run. Nice. Well, let's kick off there in um, New Plymouth on Friday in race number two, the bold one at Grange Williams Stud, made in 1,200. Time is king, uh, draws barrier three with Niran Jam Palmer on board. He's a horse that was a little disappointing last time. Uh, we've worked him up in a set of blinkers since then, and his work's been uh, really improved. He's progressed well since that last start, and he'll put himself in the race, and with the blinkers on, he's certainly got to be competitive in that field. And uh, race three there, the landmark homes, 1,200, rating 75, benchmark. I choose you, the daughter of I Am Invincible. Draws barrier four and four again with Nora Jam Palmer on board. She was good last start. Um, it was a good first start run. She's taken a lot of improvements since then. She got back on a race that probably didn't change too much complexion. Um, Petrucci obviously was there on the corner and she was solid to the line. But I thought I choose you built into the line sharply and uh, she's taken a lot of benefit from that first up run and i expect a bold showing on friday and race for the agri forum comcat 1200 rating 65 benchmark aquis um for pen caro stud draws barrier six with her and jam palmer on board she's come back a lot stronger this preparation uh really thrilled with the way she'll present on friday uh whatever she'll do she's obviously gonna improve off but she's found herself in a very winnable race um, there's not a lot of depth to this field and race eight, the Intain New Zealand Bloodstock Insurance Pearl Series race. Uh, rating 65, benchmark, Albanet draws barrier 14 with Nara Jam Palmer on board. She's come back in great order this season. Um, her first up run was really good, and then she just got caught wide at Matter Matter. But she still only finished a couple links off the winner, so you can forgive her on that. Um, she's taken good improvements since then, and she heads to this race in great order. She handles wet ground, and the mile's obviously going to suit her. <laughs> and um, over to Rickerton there on Saturday, we kick off in race two, the Entain New Zealand Bloodstock Insurance Pearl Series race, two-year-olds, set weight and penalties over 800. We probably thought we would have seen a bit more from Dream of the Moon there um, on debut a few weeks ago. Has she um, improved or were there any um, underlying reasons for that run? I think she just didn't cop the track. Um, she's had a week out of the stable and she's come back in great order. The team... I'm really thrilled with the way she's been working up into this race. Um, she's drawn a nice barrier up the chute. Um, she would have taken a lot of improvement from that experience, and hopefully she can turn her form around. And uh, race number five, the New Zealand Bloodstock Air Freight Road to the Jericho, rating 82 benchmark, prismatic, um, pretty impressive form line with a 1, 2, and 2, um, has been impressive over trips. Sam Weatherly goes down to take the ride. 3,000 metres is going to be ideal for this horse. He'll go all day for us. I was surprised that he ended up being top weight. Um, I thought there would have been a couple of higher ones also trying to chase getting to the Jericho, but he's a big, strong horse that will carry the weight. And Sam Weatherly's 
going to push him right out to the line and uh, expect a really bold showing from him on Saturday. And uh, race seven, the group three on the card, they're the war degree stakes. Um, Three-year-old set weights over the mile, which is the 2,000 guineas distance. So this is a really nice trial uh, for some of those horses that will take their place um, on that first day of the Ricket and Carnival in a couple of weeks' time. So um, that is Trobian, the last start winner. Draws a bit wide there in barrier 12, but again, Sam Weatherly um, heads down to take the ride. The draw is a bit of a concern, but we rode him cold the other day and he uh, looped the field. And he did the job really well. He was strong to finish over 1,400. We had a few little niggling issues going into that win. So it made it even more impressive. And he's taken a lot of improvements since then. He's had a week out of the stable. He did some dressage. And he really enjoyed that. Uh, he's in great order. The team are happy with the way he's working. And Sam Weatherly's ridden the horse before and gets on with him really well. And uh, we're expecting another big improvement from this horse. Nice. And race eight there, the Copeland's Bakery Mile Trial, open handicap over 1,400. Um, and, of course, the favourite for the Copeland's Bakery Mile is It's Business Time, who's been really impressive um, since she's been down in the south. The daughter of Termi Leach draws barrier two with Sam Weatherly on board. She's been great this season. Uh, she's probably won at trips that doesn't really suit her. She's a big, rangy sort of filly that's going to get over a lot more ground and time. So stepping her up to the 1,400 will be ideal. She'll jump from a nice barrier. She'll have a soft run and um she certainly ticks all the boxes and um after saturday hopefully we can press onto the copeland's mile and be a live chance and race 10 there the pride's easy fed rating 65 benchmark 1600 um elegant lady draws barrier 12 with sam weatherly on board she's had a very luckless uh, preparation down the south island so far um i thought she was great at Timaru last start uh, she got to the line as strong as she could in the mile Probably won't suit as much on Saturday. She's probably a mare that's looking to get over a bit more of a trip now. But Sam Weatherly, he'll be he'll probably get back from that draw and be running on strongly. And off her form, she has to rate a top three chance for sure. And Al Millie B also on that race draws barrier 10. No jockey listed at this stage on Wednesday afternoon. Um, will she take her place? She will. Um, originally, we had Jonathan Parks booked a ride, but due to flights, he can't fulfill that engagement, which is... a uh, bit of a bugger but um we'll just sit and wait for a jockey but she was dominant in her maiden win last start and she's improved out of sight since um the team have been really happy with her progress since then and um, she can definitely take the step up to 65 grade and over to um the auckland racing or auckland thoroughbred <laughs> racing at Brookcoe park meeting there on saturday as well to kick off there in race two the dunson horse beats 1200 millie fiore we haven't seen her for a while and um Petrucci, the last start winner who draws barrier one with craig grills on board well fiore has come back in great order this season um it's probably a good season for her to try and chase some black type races and make herself a very very valuable mare she's not getting any younger uh, Jess Allen gets on with her really well. She obviously won on her two starts ago, which was a great front-running display at Royal Kaka. Um, and she's getting her weight down to the minimum of 54. So she's um, definitely a top three prospect in this sort of field. And Petrucci's really flying. She's um, did well first up. Um, Craig Grills came in on Tuesday and worked her for us, and he was absolutely thrilled with the way she worked. Um, hopefully the rain will stay away from Pukekohe for Saturday. Um, she's a mare that likes the top of the ground, but she's certainly going the right way and she's definitely a winning chance. Fantastic. And race five, the New Zealand Bloodstock ready to run, so our trainees, trainer series 1500. Um, Pre Defer um, takes his place in the field, draws barrier four with the apprentice Jessica Allen claiming three kilos. The three kgs off will be ideal for him. Brings his weight down to a very competitive weight of 59. He races well at Pukekohe, having one, uh, run second in a group one race there um it's going to be a good lead up race for him for if we take the option of running him on melbourne cup day over 2000 meters or head to a race that he was very unlucky in last year in the Gartshaw mile at tauranga uh, but from that draw he'll he'll probably just slop out the back and do it mind his own business he's got a really good turn of foot and it'd be great to see him back in form and race seven, the Hanoi Farm, 1400, <coughs> running 75 benchmark. Cognito takes his place in here, draws barrier 12 with Nuran Jam Palmer on board. Um, has had the two runs in this prep, but I guess last start at Egmont, he found himself on a very sticky track and um, and, and ran pretty well um, given the conditions. He's come back in great order this season. Um, exactly, it was the track at Hara. Um, we did 
I uh, think about maybe late scratching him, but we were there and he ran well. I thought he hit the line full of running and Michael was really thrilled with the way he handled himself. He got back into an awkward spot, but hit the line full of running. Um, Palmer gets on with the horse really well. He is in a real tight finish with Sharp and Smart 15 months ago. And um, if he can recapture that form, he'll definitely be winning this race. And uh, race, uh, race eight, they're the group two, J Jamison Park Soliloquy Stakes, um, a time-honoured race this as well, three for the three-year-olds, um, fillies on, on, under set weight conditions over 1,400 metres. Uh, My Lips Are Sealed um, comes back for a new prep here. Um, did um, run well fresh up there at Avondale um, in early September there, over 1,200 metres. Um, what can we expect from her? She has trialled um, in this preparation. It was a little disappointing last start at Tauranga, um, whether it was the good ground or it was just second up syndrome, I'm not sure. Um, but we can't fault her at home. She looks good. She's trotting out nicely. She's eating well. If there was any rain floating around at Pukekohe on Saturday, it'd certainly bring her into it even more. She has drawn a sticky barrier, but she does seem to get back in her races. Um, but I'm, ju I'm just not 100% sure um, where she ends up in the running and uh, how her chances look on top of the ground right race you've been pretty good to the viewers out there over the last few weeks you got Taliska home the other week you're definitely in better form than you were last season so can you steer the viewers um somewhere this week for your best bet i think petrusi will be very hard to beat at pukakoi um well there you have it the best bet for the weekend is petrusi there um at um, pukakoi park so thanks for your time race and um have a good week mate we'll catch up soon Thanks, Hazy. Now, we've just um, caught up with Reese Trumper, and now we're lucky enough to be joined by um, Tiako assistant trainer in Australia, Ben Gleeson. Ben, um, you've got a pretty special guest in behind you. Um, can you talk us through what's going on in the um, in the screen? We do. It's I'm obviously a bit crouched down here, but um, we've got some building going around the corner, so it's a good spot to uh, perch down away from the noise, and uh, I thought the star of the show could join the show. Well, welcome Imperatrice and obviously Ben as well. And um, we might just kick off with um, with her and um, talk about um, the Manicato, her lead up. She obviously had a bit of a rip around um, the valley there on Tuesday at the breakfast with the stars. Um, can you talk us through how she's kind of progressed over the last couple of weeks since we last caught up? Yeah, Hamish, she's done nothing but thrive uh, in the last couple of weeks. We took her to Flemington for a gallop last week, uh, last Tuesday, and she worked the house down. I was pretty vocal about the fact that I thought it was the best piece of work I've seen her do. And um, she just ticked over for the week after that. We took her down to the beach. And then uh, just to kick this week off, we took her to Mooney Valley to breakfast with the stars. And again, she sat a few lengths off Rubicon Crossing, who races Friday night. And, and again, she's flying at the moment. I think she's a very good chance. And uh, Imperatrice just picked her up and, and went straight past her. So um, she showed that that sort of appreciation for the value that we know she has and um, she looks magnificent. She couldn't be better heading to Saturday. Fantastic. And can you tell us a bit about this uh, massage blanket that she's been wearing? I, I see she's um, had it on a couple of times and she seems to really enjoy it. Um, can you tell us a, a bit about that um, and what it's done for her through the prep? Yeah, so Mark found this um, this massage rug that it's certainly a, a valuable asset, but she's just loving it. She wears it every morning at the moment. It's basically a a head to toe massage rug um, where it's got sort of vibrating plates from her neck all the way down to um, her backside and it really helps her, her back muscles relax um, you know she's like any elite athlete she gets a bit of soreness here and there and um, the rug just helps her relax every day she's just head in her feed bin when she has it on and she yawns every few seconds which is sort of a sign from a horse that they're really relaxed and enjoying it and yeah. uh, it certainly helps her muscles to be nice and supple and when the physio looked at her this week, he was thrilled with her. Fantastic. Well, um, we, we could probably both do one with one of those for Christmas, Ben. Um, and I think there will be some footage of her wearing that later on on the social. So go and check that out. And um, Ben, obviously a big, um, well, good luck going into the weekend. It's going to be a big night of racing on Friday and then into Saturday as well. So um, good luck and um, we'll catch you again sometime soon. Thank you very much.